Saints quarterback Derek Carr talks accountability on the offense and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is New Orleans Football presenting this video to us. So, hey, listen, I know I plug them all the time, but training camp has got to be the best time to get involved in New Orleans Football. And these guys are on the ground. These guys are there. They might be wearing pads and helmets. I don't know. Mike Triplin might be running wheel routes. Who knows? They are on the ground. So if you want day-to-day, hour-to-hour, second-to-second training camp coverage, go to neworleans.football, ladies and gentlemen. The link to their website is always in the description of these videos. Now, Derek Carr, Saints franchise quarterback, the man. Look at those beautiful eyes. Look at the delts. Look at the triceps. Look at the freshly shaven shoulders. Derek, first interview of training camp. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Let's react like only we can do. Derek, let's just start with that, with, with Alvin just being here and how that is. And, and maybe talk a little bit about how he is uh, meeting. Different strokes, different folks. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a different location. This is not an airline drive. This is in California. It doesn't matter. B-75 bombers are flying overhead. I feel like I'm in Metairie's. I feel like I'm at PJ's. Matt Bauer's auto group might as well be behind this uh, this wall right here. This is ridiculous. Why can the Saints not give me an interview where I'm not in the middle of Top Gun 3? Damn it. Accountable for some of the culture stuff that, that may have, you know, wasn't probably there last season. Yeah, he's been absolutely amazing. Um, you know, he was there in mini camp for two, the two days. He was really there three days. Uh, and then he just, he had to go. And uh, he showed up to camp. He's been here. So the question, if y'all didn't hear that, while Maverick and Merlin and all the other Top Gun firefighters, or firefighters? Fire, what are they called? Firefighters? That they're not called firefighters, right? What are they called? They're called something. I know they have a name. But no way, it's firefighters. It makes no sense. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. It's been a long day, ladies and gentlemen. been traveling was on the West Coast, was in the mountain time. Now I'm back in Central. Uh, I'm all discombobulated. I'm downright befuddled. But what he was talking about while the planes were overhead why, was that Alvin, amidst his contract dispute, has been around. He's been great, uh, according to Derek. And we talked about that, that a little bit last week was Alvin's contract dispute. Uh, he's come out and said, you know, he's not asking for the world. He just kind of wants to be compensated. He just wants to be secure. He wants to be... Uh, that all to be taken care of. So I don't blame Alvin. I don't blame anybody for trying to get their money. I don't blame anybody for trying to get the best deal they can do. If you're in a job, <laughs> go do it for your job. Like you, you should not be uh, allowing yourself to be taken advantage of financially if you believe you are. I don't care what. Uh, I, I just thought of, of what I was thinking of. So whenever a uh, pilot a fighter pilot is in like a, like a, a battle. It's called a firefight. That's what I was thinking. So two, so in Top Gun and <laughs> Top Gun, when the planes are shooting at each other, that is a firefight. So that's why I got mixed up with the firefighters. I guess in a certain way, they are firefighters. So I digress. But yeah, it doesn't matter whatever job you're in. Like you, you know, if you're if you don't think you're being paid what you should, or if you don't think your contract is reflective of what it should be, don't just go to work just to go to work. It's not 1975, okay? Don't just bring your lunch pail, punch your ticket, and get taken advantage of, ladies and gentlemen. So, I don't blame Alvin. I do think it is good, and I do think it's a good teammate of him to be at these camps and to be involved as much as he can be while making his point known. If you look at what's happening in Dallas, it's very different. The CD Lamb, Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, that's a huge problem in Dallas right now. And if you're watching Dallas Cowboys training camp, it's not good. Jerry Jones is, is under fire. There's a lot of fire uh, verbiage being tossed around here. But Jerry Jones is talking about it. It, it is toxic there. It's very different with New Orleans and with Alvin Kamara's situation. So I think Alvin is handling it the appropriate way. Um, which I think uh, anytime, you know, it's not a secret, it's a contract thing, right? Anytime the player says, you know what, you know how I feel, and still says, I'm going to show up for my team, I'm going to show up for my organization. That's what I, I think that speaks more to the front office than anything. That's you know, what I just like, said, baby. I love that. I'm you know, rolling up like, my I sleeves was, I was looking with Derek. 
Yeah, I didn't want to bother Me him. Me and Derek. I was, like, I was ready to call him after the first team meeting if I wasn't there. But he was there. And yep. I think that speaks. Right. That's, the, that's yeah. the loudest thing he could say, you know, by showing up. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you're rocking sleeves, roll them up. While you're watching the video, roll them up in solidarity with me and Derek. All right? Roll them up. If Derek's not wearing sleeves, I'm not wearing sleeves. That's, that's how this season's going to go. And uh, for the work in the way that he does, he talked about his leadership style. He goes to work. You know, he comes Morning. in in the best shape uh, out of anybody. Makes two of he us. He comes in ready to go. He's on his assignments. Yes. He's all that. No doubt. And he, he doesn't say much. You know, he talks to me. He talks to a few guys, you know, about some things and stuff like that. Uh, you know, about direction and how he sees it. And we talked it through and all that. But when we're out here, he just works. And uh, I think that spoke, hopefully that spoke volumes to, what, you know, whoever and whatever he's trying to get done. Were you surprised to see him? Uh, no, no. I, I expected to see him, but you never know. You know, again, sure. you never want to get into anybody's business. Especially with travel. Especially business stuff. You know? Especially with travel nowadays. I mean, Delta, we, we all know what's going on with Delta, ladies and gentlemen. I was in Utah a couple days ago. Then I was in Phoenix. I got delayed. I had to spend like four hours in the Phoenix airport. You know, so I, it, it travels a nightmare right now. So if someone's not there, it's probably a travel issue. It's probably not uh, their fault. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, personal stuff, you just won't be there for them. But like this business, you just, you know, he's a grown man. You know, let him do what he's got to do. Uh, no doubt. But at the same time, like I, I expected to see him because I knew where his heart was in mini camp. I knew where his head was and, and all that kind of stuff about, you know, things we had talked about. Um, you know, so uh, I, I can't say that I was surprised to see him, but I, I was happy to see him. You said you seemed surprised. <laughs> uh, I was surprised because I, I, when I first walked in the team meeting room, I always looked where he sit and he wasn't there. He had moved a couple rows, so that's why I was, I was like, oh shoot! <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, all right, that's better. <laughs> He's, uh, you know, he talked about his leadership style and the fact that you know, things hadn't been on point the last couple of years. Yep. How much has he really factored into the? the meticulousness that you guys have talked about in offseason and now in training camp. Well, well, the, I'll say this. The main main thing is, you know, we're, we've all made a, a commitment to each other to hold each other accountable, you know, and it starts with Clint, and Clint is holding us accountable. Like, if it doesn't matter if I completed, you know, a pass to Sheed today, you know, it's going to be like, I'll put it on this shoulder, not this shoulder, put it right here. It's like it's coached and it's in front of everybody, you know, the, the starting quarterback to. And that is a huge benefit. Like we've talked a million times, we've talked about how everyone's starting from the same kind of level. That allows for that accountability. When everyone is learning at the same pace, everyone can be held accountable. You know, it's different when people are starting ten years with ten years of experience in an offense, and some are starting with ten days experience in an offense. When everyone's doing the same thing at the same time, it does create that inherent accountability because you're all doing the same thing. You're all learning the same way especially how they've talked about learning before that they're all learning together as an offense versus silos of, of personnel groups i'll say this derek seems very different he seems much more himself and much less of the drew Brees cosplaying Derek carr that we got last year in these interviews last year Derek carr was very much playing the character that i think he thought everyone wanted to see four two three minutes into this video I feel like he's Derek Carr. I feel like he's being Derek Carr. And every interview I've seen since Barnum and Bailey's favorite clown, Pete Carmichael, has been gone, every interview I've seen since then has been this version of Derek Carr. What I think it is, I don't think it has anything to do with Pete Carmichael. I think it has to do with that Derek doesn't feel like he's trying to prove himself. He doesn't feel like He's coming into a room. Everyone's looking at him. He's the only. He's the new guy. He's the guy that, that doesn't know. He's playing catch up, and so he's going to act a certain way. I feel like that all happened last year. So I think now Derek can relax. He can be one of the guys. He can. He doesn't have to worry about all that other stuff, and he can be himself. And I think it's a perfect situation with everyone learning, everyone starting fresh, the rookie quarterbacks behind them. Yeah, I, I think it's just a good situation. I know people have made a lot about. Derek learning a new offense and how he struggles in the first year of a new offense. I don't know if I, if I put a lot of stock into that. Uh, I think the positives of this fresh start definitely outweighs the uh, the learning new offense. Someone trying to make the roster, like everyone is getting coached extremely tough, and the standard is the standard. And you know, if I'm getting coached, he's really talking to all the quarterbacks. If he's talking, yeah. you know, if he's talking to a receiver, he's talking to all the receivers. You know, and. We're all expected, you know, once that point is made, to be on it. And so, 
we'll go in there and I'll have you know a handful of things from especially from the first practice. There's always a handful you know of rust. Uh, you know, and he'll, he's going to drill. He's going to call it out and all that kind of stuff. And it's our job as players now to be like, okay, he said it. Now hold each other accountable to it out here. And so, well, it's also something too. I keep talking about the players, but Derek brings up a good point. It's also Clint Kubiak is trying to make a name for himself. Like Clint Kubiak is coaching his ass off because this is his first shot at it. Like think about last year, Pete Carmichael, again, he's 15 years into this position with the Saints. He has seen hundreds of players come and go. He has seen, you know, shoot, since Breeze, he has seen, what, eight quarterbacks? Like come and go between Trevor Simeon and Ian Book and Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton and, uh, you know, the backups that didn't even get to play on top of Breeze and like, so Carmichael might, and that whole staff might have gotten that whole, and I don't want to say like a days ago, but they might have just got to where they were coaching the way they've always coached. They were doing things the way they've always done it. And they just expected the players to kind of fall in line like players previously had done. Kubiak is not doing that. Kubiak is like, you know, he, I mean, he's he's fresh out of college at his first job. He's trying to impress. He's trying to, he's trying to figure this out too. So Kubiak also coaching as hard as he can coach is great for the players who need that kind of coaching to learn this offense and all kind of go together at once. So it's just, it's just, it really is, I think, a perfect storm situation. Um, I feel and like in it's a positive, good, not like a good sinking, place. You know, we, we, we ended in a good place in, in the offseason. I think we've picked up right there. Derek, how, how would you describe Clint like in this setting? Like, you know, we, we, Mickey was kind of talking about it yesterday where he's, he's a like, really quiet person when you're just yeah. kind of talking one-on-one, -on -one, but like, yeah. you, can, you can kind of see the, the confidence, the confidence behind it I, like how oh yeah describe oh he's very uh he's meek you know he's got he's like power under control you know he's uh you know he's calm uh but there's not sure if he used meek the way he thinks he was using meek you know there's there's certain authority to him you know and uh he knows he knows his system he knows he knows this game he's been around it since he was a kid uh so mentally he's on it uh but like you talk to him one-on-one -on -one, he's he's quiet you know, he's to himself, you know, you know, he just wants to hang out with his family, you know, nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, as you walk through life, I know everyone that watches this is different ages, different you know, levels of their life and their experience or whatever. But one thing that usually rings true is that the loudest person in the room is usually the dumbest. The loudest person in the room is usually the wrong, right? It's not always the quiet person that, you know, is to themselves or whatever, but there is a sense of confidence and there is a sense of, of, belief in their self with, with people like that. And Clint Kubiak seems to be someone like that, where when he's out on the football field, he's quiet. He, he, when he's in interviews, he's kind of quiet and kind of unassuming. And he, he's told, he's talked about, he likes to spend time with his family. He likes to go fishing. He likes to do all that. But, you know, I'm sure on the field, when it comes to his expertise, he's not afraid to, to give you his expertise. So, um, you know, always remember that too. It's not, you know, the videos of like Nick Saban chewing out his players and screaming and, 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 and nothing against Nick Saban. I'm saying don't expect every coach to have to be like that. Don't expect every coach to have to be the same way. Don't expect every person to have to be the same way. Every boss you have or every coworker you have or every friend you have or whatever. Uh, sometimes the most volatile people are usually uh, not exactly the most consistent or not exactly the most uh, secure in what they're believing and crazy uh, but when it comes to corrections and football he's on us you know he, he calls it out and and you just there's there's just so much respect for him in our room you know because one one he's coaching everybody and the standard has never changed since we met him and so uh his confidence uh, he, he doesn't yell he never yelled at us but he does like in his own way tell us like what's acceptable what what's acceptable and what's not and he does it every single day what comfortable do you feel as you're, you're, you're uh, I definitely feel feel more comfortable with just organization, the city, the team. You know, it's uh, like I said, like it, it took longer to get used to than I thought it would. Um, I thought being in the league, you know, 10 years and now 11, like it would happen faster. Uh, that really didn't matter. You know, you change organizations. You know, it's it's a lot of it's a learning curve. It really is. Yeah, I mean, and again, people are different. You know, some people take a long time to get used to things. Some people don't like change. Some people, 
you know, I know just speaking personally, like whenever I, I think I've said this before, but get a new job or start a new year of school or whatever, like I need a while to kind of feel, feel what's going on. I need a little while to feel the landscape. I need to know, you know, where do you park? What are the, you know, where's the bathroom? Where, what are the, what are the, the rules? What are, you know, the, like kind of the inside jokes, like what's happening? What's the, what's the, the temperature? What's going on? Once I have that figured out, okay, now I can kind of get involved. Now I can kind of feel comfortable what I'm doing. Some people don't care about any of that. Some people just jump in head first, don't care. Place A is the same as place B. They're just going to attack everything the exact same way. I had a feeling Derek Carr was not like that. Now I'll tell you this too. I got a feeling Kirk Cousins isn't like that. I think Kirk Cousins is going to struggle mightily with this change in Atlanta. But Derek obviously needed time to learn his teammates. He obviously needed time to learn the team, to learn the fans, to learn, I'm sure, where he lives and to learn where the grocery store is and to learn how, you know, how his kids are doing in, in South Louisiana compared to Las Vegas or California. You know, like All of that is a thing. All of that is uh, definitely has real impact on players. It absolutely has a real effect on NFL players, and it does not get talked about enough. Just the change, just going from even just climate to climate. You know, certain players like if a like Jared Goff, for example. Jared Goff is a California kid. Grew up, uh, went to college in, at Cal. He's always talked about how he does not like playing in cold weather. He is awful in cold weather games. He wants to play in sunshine. Good, good for him is that Detroit's in a dome. But if he would have got traded to Chicago and he's playing outside in Chicago, he probably would be terrible. And the and the biggest variable to that is just that uncomfortability with the weather. There is a human element when players change teams, change geographies, change locations. There is a lot that goes into that that we do not talk about. Um, especially for the family, just aspect of it. That was that was probably the hardest part. Uh, Unbelievable. Me and Derek are on the same page. Just, just been doing things with my teammates, you know, going, you know, going out to eat, having. You know, a whole bunch of guys at the house, you know, cooking them steaks. You know, it just, there's, it just felt like that family atmosphere that I was just used to, you know. And, and they did a great job. The guys did a great job of just opening their arms and helping me get through that process last year. But this year was just, I don't want to say it's easy, but it was just more comfortable for sure. There you go. Right, Nail it. Comfortable are you now? I mean, everybody's talking about being away from home, but you're actually right back home more yeah. or less now, given no Cali native and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah, everyone's like talking about you know hey we got to go across the country i'm like you know this <laughs> that's right where my house is you know uh, you know this is this I, I know these streets and so for me this is awesome um you know being out here but I, the the sad part is like the training camp like where you have your fans there like you miss that you know um you know not being in new orleans having our fans you know to see you know chris jump up and make a play or lat jump a pass and break it up you know like they Fans love that. Like we, we love that too. You know, they're they're going crazy and walk through and you know guys catch a ball. You know, like like we we miss that aspect of it. But you know the weather and all that kind of stuff. It sets up for your mindset for it to be easy. But what a, what a great opportunity for us to push through and make it hard. You know, um, and so you know we we like being out here. Um, you know, it's been cool. Um, but. It's just day one, so hopefully we continue to like it. There you when, go. Uh, when Sean Payton and Drew Brees first left, the, the organization still talked about wanting continuity, yeah. keeping the culture they had built for a long time. It seems like the conversation has changed a little this offseason. Uh, it's three years out of the playoffs. Things do need to change. Around. Yes, 100%. It's Mike Triplett asking that question. 100%. We've talked about it before. That culture, the continuity, kind of turned into a plague. It kind of turned into like a heavy baggage. It, it went from this good thing. It went from the standard. It went from what we expected. And then it turned into something where it's like we were always dreaming. We were always nostalgic. We were always wishing for, you know, Drew Brees or Sean Payton or how can we do it like Brees or how can we do it like Payton? And, and we've said before on this channel, like, we don't have Drew Brees anymore. We don't have Sean Payton anymore. It's time to get over it. I like, guess time to move on. The Indianapolis Colts don't sit there and say, "Man, remember when we had Peyton Manning? Let's try and do it like we have, like we had Peyton Manning. Let's try and do it like when we had Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne." So they have Anthony Richardson. It's a totally different situation. They have Shane Steichen. You know, like there, there's no point in trying to do it like then. It, it it happened. It's over. And that's how we should be. We should love to think about it and talk about it and remember it and all that stuff. But 
it is time for something new. It is time for a new culture. It is time for a new chapter. I've said that a million times that we're in the we're in the transition to the next chapter of the New Orleans Saints. The Breeze, Peyton, all of that. That was fun. That was awesome. Close the page. Close the book. It's time for a new book. It's time for a new, you know, and is that how long will that have Derek Carr involved? How long will that have Dennis Allen involved? I don't know. But we are beyond, we are well beyond the Peyton Breeze era. So 100% I agree. It is absolutely time for a new culture. It is absolutely time for a new uh, beginning and, and for people to, to, you know, tip of the cap to those guys, but, you know, get over it. Wow. Have you, what have you noticed most from what the approach was in your first year here and what the approach is in your second year? Yeah, there's a different, uh, it's a heightened sense of urgency. You just feel it. You know, I thought it was good last year, but like, then you get through it and you see, oh wow, this, 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 and then you get into this camp and these meetings, the off season, our team meetings, all that, like everything is just like the urgency, the standard, uh, just the energy, the fun. I mean, we're still having a great time, like a, like a team, but it's hard, you know. They've made, this, the off season was one of the hardest off seasons I've ever been a part of. Good. Um, you know, physically, mentally, I was drained, you know. I put on a few pounds. Uh, <laughs> I got my sleep back, uh, but you know, it, it was it was mentally and physically tough. But now you see like that urgency taking place. Our practices are fast, you know. Our there urgent, we go. You know, there's yes. a physicality to them. Uh, you know, already you can feel it on day one. You know, and you you feel that, and what that leads to is higher competition. Hopefully, I had a feeling uh, when we started hiring Janoko and Kubiak and Co. I had a feeling that they were going to be the culture setters. I think if you go back and look at some of the videos we did when they first got hired, I talked about how it was obvious that Dennis Allen is not the culture setter. He That's not what he does. He's not, it's obvious that Sean Payton was the culture setter. Sean Payton left, there was no culture. I mean, there was obvious that there was no culture in New Orleans since Payton left. It was Carmichael and Allen, and it was a completely disjointed mess. Think about what Derek Carr is saying. He is comparing... At this point, a day of training camp in this offseason to last year. And he's talking about how there's energy and it's fast and this and that. And that is that is all from from Kubiak and Janoka. That is all from these new coaches, and I'm sure other members of the coaching staff, but you know, you know what I'm saying. That is from them. This young, which again is why it was so important to go outside of the building. It was so important to look for new voices and new ideas and new energy. That's what's going to give us a new culture. That's what's going to push us in the, into that, in that next chapter of the New Orleans Saints. So I love to hear it. I mean, Derek Carr is an 11-year veteran. If he's sitting here saying practices are hard, practices are intense, they're, they're fast, they're energetic, they're fun, if he's saying all that, they are that. You know, he has seen everything, I'm sure. He's had tons of coordinators, tons of head coaches. Ton, I mean, you know, so for him to say that, ladies and gentlemen, it's real. Like it is real, and go look at other training camp interviews with other teams. They're not saying this. This new staff is imprinting something serious on this team, and that's what the big media is missing when they cover this. When they say when they don't cover Kubiak or they don't cover the new staff, and they just talk about well, kind of you know Dennis Allen, eh, you know his record's not great, eh, Derek Carr. They're missing the point. This is the big driver right here. Like a lot of people, a lot of people reach out to me and they say, none of this matters if we can't run the football. None of this matters if the offensive line isn't good. None of this matters as long as we have Dennis Allen. None of this matters as long as we have Derek Carr. I'm here to tell you that's not true. It does matter. It does matter to set a culture. It does matter to set that foundation for what your franchise is. It does matter to have that identity. So does that mean we're going to win the Super Bowl? No, we're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. But we're moving towards something. When you're identityless, when you're rudderless, that's how you end up winning seven games. That's how you end up winning six games, five games, four games. That's how you end up with a decade or two decades of nothing. You have to have an identity. You have to have... Something holding the team together. And then it's up to the front office to go get players that fit the scheme, fit the identity, and then try and get some results. We have taken the most important step, I think. And the fact that players are already talking about it one day into training camp, I love it. Produces higher results. 
Hey Derek, uh, Mickey was saying that he's kind of noticed a sent, uh, uh, like a chip on the shoulder for this team. I'm wondering if you've seen that, and then how have you maybe seen that as the last couple, the last couple months? Yeah, I, I, I would say that, you know, myself, the, starting with the leaders, passing on, like we're a little pissed off, you know. Man, damn, I should have paused it. Damn it. I was going to say, I bet they're pissed off. Like, I bet this team's real pissed off because they haven't made the playoffs in three years because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are winning the division because the Atlanta Falcons are getting talked about because of all of that. They probably should be pissed off. They should be mad that their fans were booing them last year, including me. They should be mad. So there should be a chip on the shoulder. Everyone's counting this team out. And it's a lot of the guys in that locker room are used to winning. A lot of those guys are used to the playoffs every year. They're used to 10 wins every year. They're not used to this. You know, so yeah, they probably should be. They should not be happy. And uh, a little edgy, you know, uh, a little testy, as my wife would probably say. Uh, uh, but it's that's this time of year, you know. Um, you know, it's going to be competitive. Uh, they want to beat us, and we want to beat them every single day. But we're doing that because when it comes to it, we want to beat the opponent. You know, you and go. we're going to do that together. So we feel like if we can have that chip, be a little edgy, be a little pissed off about it. Um, you know, that, that leads to, you know, more physicality mentally and physically. And so, yeah, I, I definitely feel that. So does that chip just come from not making the playoffs last season? Or, like, where does that chip kind of come from? I think it's not even just that. I think it's just not ending with the championship, you know. Like, you don't – that's what we all do this work for, you know. You got, you know, guys like Cam, you know, Hall of Famer. You know, you got guys like Taysom, AK, DeMario, Tyron. Tyron's 1-1. One, one, but, like, you got guys that want to do it for New Orleans. You know, you got guys – yeah, I think that's a safe answer, but I don't think that's it. I think that it's the fact that they're opening Twitter and they're seeing a million different Saints fans telling them to get the hell out of here. They're telling them, get out of town. They're telling them, we don't want you there, you know, all that stuff. I mean, the fan base has not been happy. And again, to get booed at home multiple times, that sticks with you. I'm telling you, that sticks with you. When you're reading those, tweet, uh, those tweets, when you're seeing all the stuff, when you're seeing the memes, when you're seeing all that every day, you know, like for... for us as fans, we see a meme about Derek Carr, or we see a meme about Dennis Allen or Alvin Kamara or Chris Olave or whatever. It is, you know, it is what it is. For them, that's different. Okay, for them, it's very different. I can feel living here all last season. I could feel the city was not happy with the Saints. Everywhere you went, you get in an Uber, you go to a bar. Whatever, the conversation was, this team sucks. You don't think the players can feel the same thing? I can guarantee you when they're on that field and 65,000 people are booing them, I can promise you they can feel it. Guys that want to do it here, um, and we haven't done that yet. You know, DA said, you know, what, whatever you've done, you know, he spoke to the room. He's like, whatever you've done, clearly for our team, it hasn't been enough. So every man looked at themselves like, you got to be mentally and physically exhausted every day. What else can we do? What else, how many more things can you throw? How many can you run? What else can you watch? What else can you study to make sure that when we hit that field this year, it's a different outcome? If, you know, going into the season, Chris is kind of a clear-cut number one in that room. There's really no question about it. Have you seen any, any different approach from him? How has he come into this year with kind of that mantle? Yeah, I think his mentality is always great. He's uh, he's always been communi uh, very good communicator. Uh, you know, him and communicative is the word he was looking for. I, you know, we've grown so much from the start of last year to now because, you know, when you know when Mike was here, you know, they're getting his plays, and then is it Chris, and then the, you know, it was a it's that transition of you know Chris was starting to get the one, you know, targets, all that kind of stuff, and it was, you know, it's it was different. But coming into this year, he knows like you no know, every ball. He's like in his head, every ball's my communicative as some would say you know every play that's called he should feel like i'm getting that thing and so just the communication the extra work we're putting in after practice we're going to do it every day like just all of that stuff you know is is just growth for both of us because it was kind of spread out last year whereas now yeah. it's like all right dude like these are going to be your you know 30 plays like let's get really good at these and so uh you know i think his mentality from that aspect i think his confidence, I guess, just knowing the situation is is definitely more comfortable. Same thing with Chris. Same thing. Okay, what's going on here? Same thing we were talking about with who's this guy? What's going on here? Am I investing in tax liens? Who the hell is this guy? He needs to invest in a razor. So what, what's what what the hell? I don't attend for free. I don't want to attend. Jesus. Okay. Uh, he was there. What the hell.
I think the same thing with Chris or with Derek goes for Chris. Last year, a lot of it was frustrated. Lot, uh, you know, we saw the infighting with him and, and Derek and, and whatever else happened. All of that, I believe that the Saints players were allowed to have. And they got it out of their system. But because of all the firing and the roster moves or whatever, they don't have a chance to bring it over. So it's like they got a free roll. They got a free roll to just be disgruntled, be unhappy, you know, be pissed off, leave all of that last season, take the positive stuff, and let's move forward. I think Chris Olave is going to do the same thing, where, you know, him and Derek were on the same page, you know, Olave was, was whatever. Okay, fresh start. Let's rock and roll. And I think it's going to be beneficial for him, too. Love the interview. Great interview. Ladies and gentlemen, roll those sleeves up. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Derek Carr's interview from the first day of training camp. And uh, yeah, I mean, get those sleeves up, get your delts up, get your triceps up, double lat spread as much as possible. You know, when you absolutely mog on somebody, it's never wrong to be strong. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.